everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and it is triple play week. So I am here with Misty, and I am here with Natalie, and we have an awesome surprise for you today. We are using the Drunkard's Path Ruler. Now, whenever we do a template, we try to do as many things as we can, and there's quite a few things for the Drunkard's, Drunkard's Path, but now you have three more. So we are going to start today with my project, which is right behind me. Take a look at this. How cute is this? Here's your Drunkard's Path block right here. But look, I've added a quarter of a wonky star block to it. It's and so it makes cute. this cute thing. So we're calling it Bird of Paradise because it kind of looks like that flower, the Bird of Paradise. So to make this quilt, what you need is four packs of five inch squares. So you could use a layer cake and quarter them, but we had charms, so we went with charms and we used Lancaster by Joe Morton for Moda. And it's just a great, um, you know, Civil War-esque line, really fun. You're gonna need some background fabric. That's all of this right here. And that is um, four and a quarter yards of background. Your outer border is a six inch border, so you're gonna need a yard and a half for this. And your backing is five and a half yards uh, or one three yard piece of a 108 backing. And it's just, you know, just comes together pretty quick. You're also gonna need this Drunkard's Path template. And this is the small Drunkard's Path. Right. And this is the one we use. Now there's a million ideas to do with Drunkard's Path. And honestly, we we really look the most, we just there's had so many there's options. So many, so many yeah. options, yeah. Just so many things you can do. And just a turn of it and, and something Such that appears. Such a fun block. And you'll see that with the projects we've chosen today. So um, for mine, what I did was I made a block that looks like this, where I used two Drunkard's Path blocks and two quarter wonky stars. And I just love how it came out. It's so different. We're calling it Bird of Paradise. I think it's really fun. And what you're going to do, first we're going to take our background fabric and we're going to cut those into eight and a half inch strips. Now when I cut mine, I generally do leave my whole piece folded like this. And I will measure over eight and a half and make a cut. And then you're going to turn it this way and sub cut them into eight and a half inch squares. So here's our squares right here. And then we're going to cut the center part up. This is our background square. So we're going to take our ruler and it's already at eight and a half. So you're going to line this up on the eight and a half line right here, just like that. And then we're going to cut out this little curve right here. So I'm going to do this with my rotary cutter, just like this and take that little piece out. So it's pretty easy to cut even with a 45. And then we're going to use the inner piece right here to cut out our the little circle part that's going to go in the middle. So you can see this one is already cut out, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Wait, let me find one of these squares. I'll just do this one right here. And so what you're going to do to cut this and get a good cut, and this part is going to be waste. Sorry. I don't like to waste. You know I don't like to waste, but... <laughs> you can use it for another yeah, project, though. Absolutely. Put it in a baggie. I'm pretty sure <laughs> we'll use it for something. Well, you could match it with well, all you'll these, have, too. Well, you'll have all these print ones, yeah. and you could do a oh whole other project. I could have done a whole other project have. for you guys. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Ugh, darn oh, it. oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry. It'll be in a baggie, and I'll do another project. All right, so this right here, we're going to cut this. And what I like to do when I cut this, I like to line this up right in the corner, just like this. I kind of ignore the little peaks. And I'm going to line that up and then I'm just going to cut this around here. Now the reason you can't cut them together is because they're both just a tiny bit different. And so we want this inside and that. So you really could put these two together and make the cutest little so something cute. something. All right. I'm going to have to go <laughs> back and, and see what I can do with that. All right. So we have these done and now we need to set them into this. This is a really gentle curve and so it's easy to do. And for those of you who are intimidated by curve sewing, I just challenge you to try it because, you know, um, sewing is one of those things where practice makes perfect and, you know, the first one may not be perfect, but when you do them over and over again, you get better and better at it. And literally, um, we know because we've all done quilts like this is that when you start, you're a little nervous, but by, you know, doing 20 of them or so, you're just like sailing through these. So what I'm doing here is I took my square and I folded it in half like this. And I'm going to finger press a line and I'm going to do the same thing with my little, little quarter circle right here. And I'm going to finger press a line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on top of here like this. And I should have pressed this the other way. So wrong sides together because you want to, you want to have that be in the valley 
uh, not on top of the mountain. So I'm going to line up these two lines right here and I put a little pin in here. Now is this how you girls did it? That is how I did it. Okay. Do you? I actually don't pin. You I just, just, I just sew, sew that curve? Yeah. Once I get going, I generally do yeah. too. But, you know, to start, I think, so, so then you're basically going to just turn these together and pull them together so that this piece matches up right here. And we're going to go under the... Now, I stitched mine the opposite with the concave with the, on the top. I do as well. Oh, I do the concave on the bottom. Uh -huh. Well, now you know. It works both ways. <laughs> this is we the might most wanna... <laughs> flexible tool you've ever seen. All, All right. right. How do you want to do it then? This way? I do it that way. Oh, interesting. I do it exactly the opposite. Okay. So I, I think that's actually cool that now we know it works both ways. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can do it with the do pin. Do you feel totally confused now? No. Because what I told you was... Yes. I was thinking the opposite and you, you did it the opposite. We're lots of opposites here. All right. Anyway, okay. we're going to let Misty sew this today. This feels very weird to me with the pin in it. Do you well, take care the if pin I out. take it no, out? Take the okay. pin out. I'm going to take it out. No, every, you, see, that's one of the cool things about what we do is that um, really we have three different brains. You guys have all different brains. One of you is going to sew like each of us and fun go ahead, <laughs> okay. go ahead and sew, right. you know, and, uh, and function like each of us. And so there's lots of ways to do things. And I think you just. And so all, I'm just lining it up, this up and pulling it around to match up with the curved piece as I go, watching my quarter inch seam and taking my time. And then I'm getting down here to the end. And I just pull this and make sure it matches up. And then just guide it under. There we go. Ta-da! All right, little miss. Can you press Perfect. that? Yep. All right. Oh, I press from the top too. Well, I just press once from the bottom and then flip it. Yep. Well, look at that. <laughs> Everyone has a different way. <laughs> I love this day for that very, very reason. <laughs> All right, so you're going to have two of these. Oh, and see how this one is a little off right here? Oh, that uh, might be too much. That might be too much, but it might fit in that quarter inch seam. But you started a little, yeah, see, a little off it's here. It's interesting because since mine has such a smaller piece, it feels really strange to me to work Just with this the much. the big one, yeah. yeah. But, um, All right, so same concept. Same concept. So I'm going to grab one here that is the same that is yeah, a little better. corner to corner. That's right. <laughs> I, I actually, when I did mine, uh, this might be really interesting. I actually use 10 inch squares. Okay. And so if I was a little off, I could trim it right up. Oh. I didn't use yardage. I just did 10 inch squares. And then when they wrote the pattern, they wrote it for you for yardage because it's all the background yardage and it has to be a certain size. And so, um, so if you want to use 10 inch squares, you can. But you're going to need two of these for either side of your block right here. And then you're going to need this block. And you guys know I love wonky stars and we so did the wonky cute. stars last time. And I have a couple of those blocks here started so I can show you how to do it. Now what you want to remember, the key to this is that this part right here, once you take a seam on a five inch square, it's no longer five inches. It is four and a half. So this seam, th these blocks have to match up with it, which means our five inch square that's going to go here in the center has to be cut down to four and a half. And I'm just going to take a half an inch off of two sides like this here and take that off and here like this and that's going to be this center block right here these blocks are both the background square mine are already cut to four and a half and then um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to sew the legs now I have one set of legs here sewn so I'm going to sew another set of legs just to remind you how to do that how easy the wonky star is and so I'm going to take this one. I think I'll make red legs on this. So basically, I'm going to finger press a center mark right here. And I'm going to cross over that mark with my leg and bring my leg down to the side a little bit. And I'm just going to sew right there. There we go. And Natalie, if you'll press that back, I kind of... This is how I sew, you guys. I'm a mess. I'm all over the place. You want these wonky star legs to be kind of long, right? I do want them to be kind of long. So, um, because that's what gives it the bird of paradise look. So, so fun. What I'm going to do here now is I'm going to cut this straight up like this. 
This is the part I'm going to keep for my other leg, and I'm going to trim this top piece off right here. And then I'm going to turn this like this, and I'm going to put this leg over here, and I'm going to take it way down as far as I can get it on the side. Let Misty sew that a quarter of an inch. I just used the edge of the fabric as my guide at this point. It doesn't really matter because it's going to, you know, it's, it's, it's going to look great either way. Oops. Hold on, I forgot this isn't my machine at home. No. <laughs> have to remember the other machines sometimes. That's right. Well, you, you're looking for the, fab, but, the no, thread, my thread cut. cut yeah. yeah, and I don't have it on this one. No. It's a great little machine, though. This it is. is. This is a little workhorse machine. It is. This is a little jubilant by, by Baby Lock, and it's a great little workhorse. All right, now we're going to trim this one up again. We use this square as our pattern, so line your ruler up along the white square and just trim those edges off like this and you have your wonky leg star. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build this corner block. So we're gonna take our four and a half inch piece and we're gonna sew these four and a half inch legs on here. We're gonna use another four and a half inch background square right here and then sew these legs over here. So this basically is gonna to go together like a four patch and you'll make two of those for each block. Now I have a couple over here done. I have this one, That's this is half my block sewn together right here. So basically, once you get this part done, you're going to attach it to this part like that. So it's going to be like this. And then this is our other half over here. And Misty, I think we'll let you sew this big one together. Okay. I should have, yeah, here's one of these. So basically, you're going to sew, we're going to sew these two together right here, like this. Okay. And I'm going to move these out of the way. But gee, even just like this, I mean, there's, this would make a fun little ta table runner with, you know, a few of these. I just love that. I love when you combine two blocks because you never know what you're going to get. And, um, and so it's fun to try these things. That's the creative fun part I love is what do we get when, you know, what happens if. I love that part. All right. So now we're going to take this and we're going to put this over here. And she's going to sew this down. And, the, and really, you know, you want to watch this matching right here a little bit. So right here you have where this comes together and this comes together. That should line up. And then this part right here, you want to seem to go both directions. And so if you'll sew right down that. Absolutely. So once we get these done, you'll see this makes a pretty good quilt. It's 75 by 91, so it's a good size quilt. Um, fun. I think it looked... You know, it kind of looks like candy. It has, kind of looks like chicken. It looked like a bird of paradise to me. You know, it's got all these different looks to it. And I think the fabric you use would really change what you, how you thought of the quilt. And the backgrounds too, you know. Yeah. I love it when, like, like, uh, if you, like if you used a navy background and some fabric. I mean, I love it when you change things up. So don't be afraid to try some different things with this. All right, now Natalie, if you'll iron this open. Sure. And I have one of those blocks. I'm just going to put my stuff over here because I know what's coming. Over here like this, and I have this block. Now when I go to put these together, literally this is how it fits in the quilt like this. Just like this. Nice points, Misty. And I just <laughs> iron them. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I just put them together like this. So they're all kind of heading the same direction. You know, their beaks, if you will, are all kind of going the same direction. <laughs> they so do cute. kind of look like they chickens. Do, yeah. And you, you just <laughs> sew chickens. this together, you know. And so um, I just think it's really a fun idea and a nice, fun take on the drunkard's path. I love it. And I hope you enjoy my take on it. Right. And next up is... Is it me? Misty. Misty. All right. All right, I get the sewing chair. Okay. This is my project. Oh, Ta-da! Oh, so cute. Maybe it's little. This so cute. Here, let's hang this up, Hiding Natalie. back here. I love the little flowers. Thank you. And I, I'm calling it Morning Glory. That's such a great name. It, well, I appreciate your guys' uh, suggestions because I, after I had finished sewing it, I was really struggling with the name. And Ginny and Natalie helped me come up with that. And I just think it turned out so cute. Um, for my project, I used this Royal Blue line by Edita Sitar for Laundry Basket Quilts. From, we love her. I love her. She's darling. She's uh, so, she designs so for kind. Andover, and it's this beautiful uh, kind of blue and beige line. 
And so for mine, I decided to separate it out. It is mostly blues with just a few lights. So I used all of the blues for the petals and all of the lights for my background. And so let me show you how I did that. Um, just like Jenny cut out her blue curve, it's the exact same for the inside piece. And I just, actually I want mine going this way. And I just line it up and trim. And so that is waste. I did not do anything with that. And then I just hold on to that. And then for the background, I actually used this part of the ruler. And let's do this way first. And you line up on the four and a half. You line up on the four and a half because that's what our uh, blocks need to end up measuring. And so I just cut a little piece here and then go in this way and cut a little piece here. And I actually get two of my background colors out of each of these five inch squares. So I just turn my fabric and line it up again on that four and a half. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's great. So you get a little bit less waste. And so I cut those off. That's a really smart way to get a little extra when you have um, not exactly half and half. In exactly, your charm pack. exactly. So then you get a little bit more out of your, your fabric. And so then you have these cute little petals. Uh, left from those. <laughs> and so then all I did was sew these together just like we did for Jenny's to create um, my drunkard's paths. And then I set them with some solids from the line that I cut into four and a half inch squares to match up. And I just put them like this. So you can see here to make oh, yeah. to make my petal. So here's my drunkard's path and so my drunkard's path. It's like just a big a four, four patch. It is a bit, yeah, four patch. And then you put them together in fours. And so then I put that like this. And like this and then you sew that like a four patch and then we put four of those together so I have those sewn here let me show you so once you have those sewn together this is exactly how I made it I made it in quadrants like this because it was easier for my brain you could totally do it in rows if you wanted and then I, I would just, make I think, quadrants. yeah I think, I think so too it's like it's a great. flower exactly it made a lot of sense to me and so this is how I did that these are such vibrant Aren't they colors. so fun? Yeah. And I love all of the beautiful prints. And I love that, you know, it was all these different backgrounds just makes it really scrappy. But because of the blue and the beige, it still really pops. So and I'm, then you sashed and it. And then I sashed it. I guess I should measure my block. So here's my finished block. Let's see what that comes out to. I believe it should be 16 and a half. Mm -hmm. So 16 and a half. So I cut my sashings to 16 and a half and sewed it on either end and then added these little... Uh, cornerstones. My sashings are two and a half inches wide, and I yes. added a little border. So let's go over how um, much how, what, how much fabric you yes. use for that. Yes. So it's a half yard for your sashing, three quarters of a yard for your border, and then three and a quarter yards for your backing. And then and did your uh, cornerstones come out of your um, charm pack? So I actually cut them out of my binding because I decided I wanted it to be the same color. Oh, okay. But there is enough in your charm pack if you want them to be scrappy. And so you're you'll just have two, to two, two charm packs. Oh yes, that. two packs of five inch squares there is what go. I used for my <laughs> whole project. Yeah, I guess that kind of is important. But it just came together super cute. But I had all these little petals, and they reminded me of an orange peel. So I had to do something with it. Oh my god. So gosh. I just made a little pillow. How cute is that? <laughs> I, you know, it was just too much waste. So I did this last <laughs> night just for fun. I had all those sitting around and I just did raw edge, but it would be so easy to turn this up under or do oh, a little blanket so stitch. Cute. But yeah, just a little I something. Love it. Thank you. But anyway, it was really fun and I loved doing this drunkard's path. It's it so was cute. Fun. It's really a good time. So all right, Nat, I'll let you all right, here's take Natalie. over. Let's get all my junk out okay. of the way. Misty step up over here. All right. All right, now. Here's yours and your paper and your quilt. Beautiful quilt. All right. All right, here you go. All right, let's see your project. So my quilt is all in the layout. It's so cute. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? I love it. All right. All right, we'll hang this up. So I named my quilt River Path because I like how it waves up like a river, it like does. water like ripples. Water it does. It does look and awesome. I use Path from Drunkard's Path because, you know, why not? River yeah, path. Absolutely. <laughs> Natalie is a perfect. quilt naming professional. She's oh, got that's all... That's the hardest thing we do is, it is name so quilt. It's really, it's really hard. I wouldn't call myself a professional. 
No. Well, we, some of them yeah. are good and some of we them just aren't. Luck it's out okay. Every once in a while. <laughs> All right, All right, so I used ColourPop Batik stamps by Kathy Engel for Island Batiks. I used two packages because um, I wanted it to be a good size and I needed to make sure that I had enough colors. Um, I have three quarters of a yard for the border and a half yard for binding. Uh, my border is, what is this, I think little? it's five inches. And it and look makes at a, this quilting. I love the quilting. The quilting too. is music notes, and I just think that's so darling. It's really fun. Really cute. Yeah, I like to use fun patterns on my quilts. <laughs> um, so it ends up being 41 by 49 and a half, which is great for a baby quilt. I think it'd make a cool wall hanging. And what you have to remember is if you do want this bigger, you're just going to add two more, and it will right, double right, the size. Right. So this whole quilt is in layout. So I cut all of my pieces just the way uh, Mom and Misty did it. I cut Except the, you're cutting both pieces. Both pieces from one, one square. One square. Yeah, I'll I'll demonstrate if you. Hang on, just a sec. So she's getting a, she's getting a middle and a back, or a middle and a, yeah, and a middle and an outside. Right. Both out of one square. So yeah. You, you cut the um you cut the inside first. Yep, and I I do mine the opposite of you because I'm right-handed. Which is perfect for all the right-handers out there. That's right. right. So that piece gets cut with the, with the little inside circle. And then the outside piece gets cut with this. And you're and at, you, we're, probably, you probably want to be over here a little bit. We're just cutting. Cut over here a little bit so everybody can see with the upper camera. Okay. We are just cutting off a little sliver in the middle nice. and the two, um, the two little edges that are just a little bit too long. And that just has to do with the, like the concave and convex of a circle yeah. and how they come yeah, together so little waste though so it's just yeah. this little so, tiny bit <laughs> this is all the this is all the waste you have wait here look at look i think oh, you're like gonna little, make a little, a little smile. smile i think we should make a little smile for this like, oh that's here, perfect where he's got a little hat oh so, just, so cute so adorable. cute adorable. <laughs> adorable okay all right so now let's let's look at the layout real quick so we started this one with the green check in the top corner and it faces this direction. We have a little blue one up here in the top. And then if you'll, you can notice that there's a, uh, another one, another drunkard's path facing the opposite direction, it goes this way. I was gonna ask you, is it easier for you to like, cause when you were laying them out, to go this by row or do you follow the rivers of each? Well, so when I started, because I didn't have a pattern and I was designing and trying to figure it out, um, I actually, and this might help if you end up using a different line of fabric just to figure out how many colors you have. I was not interested really in counting and <laughs> matching and numbering everything. So I picked the section that I had the most of, which was this red. And I actually created this section first. And then I added my next orange and yellow and green. And I just went I went down this way and okay. then I finished up that, that way. That because, is really good to know. Because in here, there, this, you felt like you had the most reds. Yeah. I did. Okay, cool. Yep. All right, that makes so sense. So I just, that's how I laid it out initially. But you guys, if you buy this same fabric, you can follow the diagram. It'll be way easier for you. Well, let's do it. Do another, um, okay. do another couple over here. So, so to create this curve, you're going to add another one of these that matches the green. And if you'll notice in here too, I didn't always have like the exact same color, but because they're all green, it it, it works. flows it really flows. well. And by exact same, she means like this middle section here isn't the exact same as this back one right Right, here. the print right. is different. Right, so they're all, you know, they're all yellow or green, but they're not necessarily the same fabric. Okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Which I think is fine. All right, so the next one up here is one of these guys. And we'll put that guy there, and this one here. And then to finish out this curve, we need one of these. There's one. And we need another one up here so that it curves off that way. You guys see how this comes together? I love it. Okay, that makes sense. And then a blue, a little blue speckle goes up here. And we could do another one down here. And mm -hmm. then we need another one of these little dots to uh -huh. cover that. Also, I think when you sew these together, when you do a quarter of an inch on these, uh -huh. You, this, this little seam right here literally disappears into it your does. next one. Yeah. So don't yes, be afraid of that. If you do that, that's right. It's very tiny. It's it very kind of goes off the edge a little mm -hmm. bit, but it all gets so, caught. Yeah. And so you can like right see here. that like this, um, it's literally like barely shows up right there. And some of them get caught a little higher, but it, it curves in. So you can't even tell that. Yeah. They're... What you're going for is that layout. Mm-hmm. 
This is really yeah. fun, Natalie. It's I so loved pretty. I loved all the different projects. I love <laughs> what a difference fabric makes. Yes. You know, I mean, had Natalie, had she chosen one of our fabrics, this would look completely different, but it would still work. And so it's just fun to see how that yeah, all goes there's together. There's so many fun ideas. Love that extra project. Oh, that thanks. makes it really fun. <laughs> so I learned cute. that from you. No waste, you That's know? right. That's right. <laughs> Except now I have a whole piece that I have to go figure out something to do with. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I will do that. So we hope you enjoyed this triple play from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We'll see you next time.